We're going to discuss in this video what the SQL Server agent is. Um, what is it for? How do we use it? Well, um, sometimes you would um, set it up yourself. In other times, it's done automatically for you. So I'm going to show you a bit of both. Um, but first things first, what is the SQL Server agent? Well, it's if you would like to call it the governor of SQL Server. Um, an example would be backups. You can set up a manual backup, um, but that means every time you want to backup your database you'll have to manually go in and do it, whereas you can set it up to go on a schedule so it runs at midnight or three o'clock in the morning. Anything where a schedule is involved, the SQL Server agent always is involved. Um, so that sort of describes what the SQL Server agent is. It's just basically a scheduling system. But it's more than that. It does a lot more, which we'll get into. Um, now, to understand it, it's a bit of a chicken and an egg approach um, because everything is interlinked. You go to a job to create a schedule. However, it also requires operators, alerts, it'll do error logs, etc., etc. So we're going to go from the top, so from here downwards. Now, first little tidbit the SQL Server agent actually resides in the system database of MSDB. Now, another video that I've shown recently, which is not the most exciting, which is all about the, um, the um, system databases, will actually discuss, discuss this in further detail. Um, however, suffice it to say, all of your scheduled jobs are stored in MSDB. Um, so it's very important to back that up from time to time. Otherwise, if MSDB goes bad, it gets corrupted, and you restore back to the original version when you first installed SQL, you will lose all your schedules, which is a bad thing. So MSDB, very important to back up. Right, got that out of the way, let's have some fun. Um, jobs, what is jobs? Well, I'm on SQL 2008, however, if you're on SQL Server 2005, doesn't really matter, I'm going to cover both of the both options. Um, in jobs, in SQL Server 2008, I've actually got a one which is set up by the installation, which just purges the history, keeps things going nice and neat. I'm not going to bother with that one. However, um, that will have a schedule associated with it, and it would run at certain times. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create our own job. Um, but before we do that, we have to discuss these other options. So at the moment, just store in your mind that jobs is actually where it all comes together. You would run the job, which would be on a particular schedule. It would notify particular people if necessary, and it would action on your database. Now, the options underneath are other areas that SQL Server Agent can go to. For example, alerts. Now, a classic example of this is if your transaction log or your database becomes full, one of the things you may want it to automatically do is to either shrink down the log or give your database a bit more space. Well, technically what alerts does is it constantly looks at the event viewer which is a Windows error log system and it identifies certain numbers and then it would then action based on what you set up in alerts so at the moment there are no alerts but if I right click and choose new alert I get this dialog box up just move it up and I'm just going to um, type in transaction log error now, I know from looking around um, what the transaction log error number is. Now, I'll just bring up Google because what I did was I just typed in SQL error transaction log full and the first one, which is TechNet, tells you exactly right here. I'll just highlight it for you. SQL Server Database Engine issues a 9002 error when the transaction log is full. So, back in here, I will go into the error number and I will put in 9002. The event is going to be looking at all databases. You may not want that. You may want to set it up for individual ones. I'm happy to leave it like that. And that's the alert set up. So it's going to be constantly enabled and running in the background. But who's it going to tell? If I go to response, you see it's either expecting me to execute a job so I could run a script or another job in effect up here or I notify operators. Well, I have no operators at the moment, so I'm going to cancel that and go to the operators folder. Right click, new operator. So this comes up with this screen here, so I'm just going to put in my name, John, and I've got an email address of say john at test uh, com, and that's it, that's all I'm going to do. Notice there's a notification section here I'll come back to, so I'll just OK on that. So now I have an operator called John. Let's go back to the alert again, 
and set it up. So um, TX log full, Ooh, if I could spell. And 9002 was the error number. But now in response, you'll see if I say notify operator, I can specify email and OK. So now I have an alert that's constantly running and it will email me as soon as a transaction log goes um, down. Um, so that's the purpose of alerts. Now operators we've just talked about, but I'll just go back into. <clears throat> Um, you'll see that we have um, options for pager settings, so if you did have pagers and you need associated software for that, you can actually send it via pager, bit old school now. Um, other options is you have the net send command where you can send messages to a computer instead. And over on the other side we've got notifications. Notice now TX log falls there because it's an alert and I'm going to be emailed on it. And then history at the moment I've never been emailed but you'll be able to see the, the recent um, thing done in there. So I'm just going to click on to OK. I've not changed anything. And expand the bottom one error logs. I'm not going to go into that will be a separate video just talking about what the error log is and, and how you would deal with it but suffice to say all it does is when you look in an archive <clears throat> between particular dates it gives you what's been going on so in effect it's like a filtered view of the event viewer for SQL Server now the important thing is jobs but we've had to explain alerts and operators because they come in effect in jobs so we do a new job and notice we've got alerts, notifications and so on, so I'm just going to call this um, test. And what's the category? Well, let's just say this is um, data collector for some reason. You can create your own categories, um, but in steps we now create a series of steps that we need to um, produce. So um, the first one is, um, let's say, start BI process and then underneath it what type of step is it so we could go in and say it's SQL integration services analysis services so there's all sorts of different commands you can do now just to give you an idea of what you can do the answer is everything you can even go to PowerShell or operating system there's, the sky's the limit so I'm just going to choose SQL Server I'm just going to leave it on um, master and I'm just going to say select star from test table doesn't exist I don't really care um, but the point of the fact is I'm telling it to run step one which is start the BI process and it's just going to do a select statement I'll click on OK and it's done now you may have noticed there was actually an advanced page I want to come to that in a second I'm just going to do another new step because you can have multiple steps in the same job and I'll just say finish BI process and in this case I will say do exactly the same thing and I'll just do select star from master uh, test even now remember what we're doing in here is very specific and we'll probably have a subsequent video talking about how you would start up integration services etc but I'm just going to OK that and I'm going to OK again at which point it went through fine however I'm going to go back into the properties of that test because it's important to mention that when you look at each step if I edit that step, the advanced tab tells you what do you want it to do next. So if I just move this over a little bit, I'm telling it on success of the first step, go on to the next step, which is the finish BI. If I just cancel that and go on to this one, you'll see that in the advanced it says quit the job reporting success. However, I could tell it to go back to step one again if necessary. So there's a bit of logic you can put in here. So an example is if you're running a BI process and the process fails, you could just tell it to retry again that step or tell it to go all the way back to the beginning and start all over again. So there's, there's loads of different options that you can do. So I'm just going to cancel that. Schedules, this is where you would go in and set up your um, schedules. If you're used to Outlook, this is very, very similar. You specify dates, times, etc, etc and then alerts you can then add an alert and oh look where we are we're back where we were talking about a moment ago so things like transaction log full check for things like that during this process and notifications I could say yeah email me when the job fails and okay it and there you are, you've now got a job selected. Now, very whirlwind because I'm almost out of time, I'm just going to talk about in the management section I'm going to create um, a particular um, job so we right click on maintenance plans and do new maintenance plan, uh, call it maintenance plan, 
and what this will do is it will bring up this um, box here and so I'll just call it test1 no, oh, I've called it maintenance plan already. And then underneath it, I've got these options. So let's say I want to back up the database, drag and drop. And once it's in, I'll just double click on this task, it brings up a load of options. I'm going to leave it alone because I'm out of time now. However, I'm just going to save that. Well, after I've done um, a um, schedule. And then I'll just say OK to that. And I will save it and then close. Now the important thing is why have I done that? Because if I go in here can you see now I have a new job which is the maintenance plan that I've set up. In a subsequent video I will talk about maintenance plans in a lot more depth but the purpose of this was to explain how SQL Server Agent works so I hope this has helped.